Okay, welcome. My name is Eben Kormann, uh, and uh, I'm working here at the Health Innovation Center of Southern Denmark, uh, the, 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 the place where you're situated right now. Uh, I'm working as a special consultant in a unit for digital innovation. Um, yeah. So today I'm briefly going to introduce you to uh, the Health Innovation Center, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the challenges in healthcare in Denmark. Uh, and I'm going to showcase four uh, cases of uh, home monitoring or telemedicine uh, here in the region of southern Denmark. So first, you can see uh, the Health Innovation Center is the, uh, we're sit situated here, and you have the university here, and our new hospital right here. So uh, these are some of our main um, partners within all of some of our projects. So we are working both within the university and the new hospital. We are approximately 65 uh, people working within the uh, innovation center. Uh, a lot of people working with new hospitals, both here in Odense, but also in the rest of the region. Um, and we are in the unit I'm from, uh, working with the uh, digital innovation, we are approximately 25 people. Um, yeah, and in the center we have both architects, designers, engineers, uh, physicians, uh, IT uh, managers, and uh, bureaucrats as I am. So first of all, I'm not a physician. I have a master degree in political science. So I'm not going, going to talk a lot about uh, the physician part, but rather about uh, how we are implementing telemedicine solutions in the region. So future challenges. I guess we have the same challenges all, all over the, the Western world. Um, we have a growing elderly population. By 2038, Denmark's, Denmark is expected to have twice as many citizens aged 80. So that, that is a huge challenge in Denmark. Then we have a declining birth rate. Uh, projections point to uh, 2030 as the milestone year in which elderly citizens will outnumber children in Denmark. And more people will suffer from chronic diseases. By 2025, the number of citizens living with with the most common chronic diseases is expected to increase by 60%. Then we have fewer taxpayers and fewer healthcare workers. Uh, and that is the future we are looking into. So things, they do not look promising. In the future, we need to push the boundaries on how we deliver healthcare and where we deliver it. Um, this is the change, uh, this change is reliant on technology and our ability to implement it in, a, it in an ever increasing pace. There is already evidence that technology can help. Artificial, artificial in it, uh, AI and machine learning are expected to help. It is admittedly early to predict that IE and ML could save the healthcare system from the silver tsunami. But there are a number of technologies exi existing right now as telehealth, remote monitoring, and chronic disease management that are already in use today. Uh, and uh, the leading hospitals are already starting to tap into both better, both better to understand the people that they are caring for and to improve, improve their patient experience. So. In the region of southern Denmark, uh, a key element in developing technology for the future is through co-creation. Uh, doctors, nurses, patients, relatives, vendors, interest in organizations, and so forth need to be brought together to produce a mutually va valued outcome. And uh, Morten, who is my co colleague here, he will go into that case uh, afterwards. So, these are the stakeholders in the Danish healthcare systems. We have all the population 
approximately 5.7 million people. Uh, we have 3,400 GPs, 80, 98 uh, municipalities and five regions. Uh, we are dependent on these stakeholders to cooperate uh, when we are facing the future uh, of, uh, of the healthcare system. So we have to be working across sector and with the patients uh, in the center of, uh, of the services we are giving. So my first case uh, is a, a solution for telemedicine, uh, telemedical wound assessment which is covering all of Denmark. Uh, the solution is primarily used for monitoring and assessing diabetic uh, food ulcers. It is estimated that 300,000 Danes have diabetes, and approximately 7% of these have uh, diabetic ulcers. Around 4,000 Danes are currently living with am amputation as a result of uh, diabetic wounds. The ambition in this project uh, is that 70% of all relevant patients are included in telemedical assessment of ulcers. Oh, sorry. This way. So, so this is uh, the project overall. Um, the nurses in the primary care uh, in the municipalities, they go home to the patient. They take a photo of uh, the ulcer, and then they send it to the specialized uh, doctors in the hospital. Uh, and they, they have to, um, to, to see the picture and then decide whether the patient needs to go to the hospital or the treatment can continue uh, in the primary care. We also had a research pro uh, project uh, uh, parallel to the implementation project. Um, and uh, it showed actually an increased patient mortality uh, in the project. Um, it con yeah. uh, all of the patients in the project were diagnosed with diabetes, but some of them were se severely ill in fact, too ill to be offered a telemedicine solution. Um, there were some misconceptions about the project. Uh, people thought that telemedicine was the reason why patients died. But by further going into data, we found that, that it was a matter of who we should uh, be offering telemedicine and who should be going to the hospitals. So we actually had an... Uh, uh, deeper education uh, in the primary sector uh, to, so they had a better uh, basis on how to assess the patients. Um, so now it's implemented in, uh, in all uh, hospitals and in all municipalities in Denmark. Then we have a home monitoring of COPD patients. As you, I guess, know better than me, uh, chronic, uh, COPD is a type of obstructive lung disease, and it's characterized by long-term breathing problems and poor airflow. Um, and it is a very progressive uh, disease, and it's, uh, they, we have more and more uh, people suffering from COPD. So that's the problem we're facing. The ambition is that 80% uh, of the target group is included in the COPD program. So, we, uh, a little bit about the, the gender, gender distribution. Uh, a little more women than men, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite... Uh, yeah. And then we have about the age. Uh, of course, it is a problem increasing by uh, age. Um, so, that is also one of uh, the barriers, because we are offering telemedicine to people who are not born with, uh, with te technology. So, around uh, 320,000 people in Denmark have COPD, but only 100,000 patients are treated uh, medically. 50% uh, are aware that they have the dis disease, they are undiagnosed or, uh, or misdiagnosed. Approximately 
5,500 deaths every year uh, due to COPD in Denmark. Uh, and it makes it the third most common cause of death in Denmark. And patients with COPD on average have twice as many outpatient visits and visits to the doctor and three times as many hospitalizations. So, uh, the national program uh, was established based on findings from the northern region in Denmark. Uh, it was called Tilkia Nord. And the last, large scale uh, project included one hospital, 11 municipalities, and general practitioners. Uh, 1,200 patients were included in the study, um, and the patients were given a telekit, uh, which allowed them to measure, monitor, and submit data about their health. Uh, the telekit was su su suppl supplemented with physical visits at home and in the hospital. Uh, cost reductions uh, were shown in the, in the project, and uh, uh, um, and they sustained a uh, high quality of life, uh, higher than uh, without the telekit. Um, yeah. And, sorry, and we also reduced uh, primary uh, sector cost and we reduced uh, the submission to hospitals as well. So the overall aim uh, for the national project uh, is that we um, by, by the end of uh, 2021, we'll have a, a, a offer for all uh, COPD patients in Denmark. Um, and the aim are to ensure close monitoring of patients with COPD. And the patients uh, will be regularly measured uh, with their satura saturation, yeah, oxygen, uh, heart rate, blood pressure, and weight. Uh, and then the results are transmitted electronically to healthcare pro professionals who analyze the data and just medication and treatment. Um, yeah. So this is uh, the overall uh, drawing of the program. Uh, we have a, f a common infrastructure, shared telemedicine infrastructure. Then we have a solution for staff and a solution for the patient. Uh, and uh, by time, it is, uh, we, we are looking into other uh, diagnoses uh, on this solution. The next one will be uh, heart, uh, uh, yeah, district. Heart, dis heart failure, thank you. <laughs> so then we have another uh, telemedicine project, with, which is also a national uh, project, a remote uh, pregnancy monitoring. Um, uh, the solution, as the other solution, started in a single hospital, uh, and now we are going to uh, give it uh, as a as an offer in, in all of Denmark. Um, the The aim of the project is to uh, be more delivering more safety, flexibility, and empowerment for the pregnant women with complications. Uh, pregnant women who experience complications during the pregnancy and who are considered sustainable uh, are offered the opportunity to monitor their own and fetal condition at home and submit measurements uh, to the hospital. The pregnant women will, with complications will find that home monitoring provides security and flexibility and it gives them a better opportunity to assume greater responsibility for their own treatment. Um, so all, uh, mat uh, all mat mat maternity wards will offer remote pregnancy monitoring by uh, the end of 2020. Uh, we have around uh, 2,600 women uh, who annually experience uh, five different types of complication during the pregnancy. It is complication incre uh, complicated increased blood pressure uh, oh, this is a physician word. Preclampsia, preclampsia, yeah, with the chronic hypertension, uh, and then light to moderate preclampsia, uh, premature rupture of uh, membranes, and severe preclampsia during formal pregnancies. So these are the five uh, different um, conditions we're going to treat at home or monitor at home, not treatment, monitoring. So. 
So the business case is, uh, is quite uh, vulnerable on this uh, project. Uh, it, was, uh, it was expected that uh, we would have a cost reduction about uh, 1.3 um, millions after full implementation. That is quite vulnerable. But what we know is that this gives a lot of um, patient quality to be home with your family rather than being in hospital for months. Um, yeah. So, but we still believe in the business case uh, regarding not being uh, hospitalized. So, but we will see in five or ten years, I think. So, the future of uh, health, uh, healthcare in Denmark. Uh, we believe that we will have more telemedicine. We have invested heavily in the infrastructure, a, a common infrastructure for in, for the entire country. Uh, and now we need to capitalize on that investment. So we need to have more diagnosed uh, groups on the, on the infrastructure. Uh, we are also experiencing a paradigm shift in healthcare. We were, uh, where we are moving from a healthcare system solely driven by the healthcare system to a healthcare system driven in collaboration with the patients. So we see this uh, push from the patients on us to deliver more technological solutions for them as patients. So what we are seeing into is that we need to move from a reactive healthcare system to a predictive healthcare system. And in, 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 in case to do that, we need to have a better use of existing data, plus we need to have more data uh, to, uh, to monitoring the patients on. Um, not just data that the healthcare system has today, but also the data that the citizens have. Uh, because we all create behavioral data. So what we're looking into right now is how to uh, take these data and make them a part of the, the entire data uh, on the patients. Uh, yeah, so that's the next uh, thing we're looking into. But for all this to uh, work, we have to work closely with the public, uh, at both public and private uh, partners. We're working within public-private innovation ships. Uh, and I think that that was the cue for more. Thank you. Now I'll just continue. Como <laughs> esta? No, no habla español. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll do it in English instead of I think. <laughs> or Danish, habla danois? No? Is it right pronounced? Habla danois? No? <laughs> uh, welcome. Welcome to Odense and welcome to uh, the Center of uh, Innovation in Southern Denmark. Uh, and I'm Morten. You just uh, heard Eben tell you something about the uh, the structure of uh, innov this innovation center. I'll just go a bit deeper into how we work uh, and what I'm working with on, on daily basis. Um, how long I plan to stay in uh, Odense? Is just for today, or just going back to Copenhagen tomorrow, or how? Also in Odense tomorrow. Okay. So I hope you'll have the wonderful opportunity to see Hans Christian Andersen's house. Have you seen it? Not yet. Okay, it's it's. Uh, I think it's uh, interesting too, actually. So, yeah. But um, I'll just dig into how uh, we work. Uh, I'm the project man manager of uh, what we call plug and play, and and it's actually uh, the facilities you see on your right hand, my left hand, um, also known, aka the dollhouse, because uh, you can see as it's uh, built, it's, it just look like an an uh, an big scale uh, dollhouse. Um, but before I just dig into that, I'll just uh, tell you or tell you something about uh, the, the the work or the uh, personnel of uh, the Innovation Center of Southern Denmark. Because as Eben told you, we have a lot of different um, types of people in this house. We are engineers. We are clinical uh, clinical personnel. We are actually also some actors here as well. We are different types of people gathering together in this house, and it makes it very interesting to work here. 
because we we'll do a lot of interesting stuff and help uh, the region, for and foremostly with the uh, um, with the innovative and innovation regarding healthcare. Um, so we see ourselves as a hub of knowledge and know-how, um, and I don't think the other regions in Denmark have an institution like ours. We actually are, like even uh, told you, 70 people gathering together in these uh, facilities every day. So it's an interesting place. Um, normally, we work with projects, um, and we got our funding by um, the basis funds from the region, but only 20%. The rest is coming from funds we seek from uh, European projects or from regional or national projects in Denmark. So that's how we work. Um, plug and play. I'll just see if this works. I want to start. Plug and play. This facility, these facilities, the dollhouse, um, is, um, is called the dollhouse because of its uh, quite unorthodox structure, okay? Um, normally, we just call it the scene, the scenario for tests and facilities. Um, it's because, as you can see here, we just changed it a little bit. It's actually the, the uh, thing you can see there, but, but because of the webcam, we had to show it on the stage as well. But you can see we have um, a room for the GP's office, um, the place the the most Danish people get to when they uh, get in contact with the healthcare system in Denmark. I think the same in, in, in your place. And we got the municipality on your right hand, uh, also on the right hand uh, upper floor on the picture. And down on the base floor, you got the, uh, the citizen's own home. And on your right hand on the basement, you got the, um, the bed section of an hospital. And why do we do this? That's, it can be found, it's because we have these uh, sector borders in the Danish healthcare system, which always gives some problems when we discuss telemedicine. So we have to build a one-to-one -one scale scenario to test and try out different types of uh, uh, solutions when we're talking about uh, telemedicine in the Danish healthcare system. Um, often we say we use, or we have a motto that says that we shorten the distance from idea to market and that the uh, plug and play facilities are test, a state of the art test and demonstration lab. We are helping in three different areas. We help with guidance and we help with events and meetings and we also uh, help with, of course, test and demonstration. That's the most of our work. 80% of what we do are the test and demonstration area. But the two others we also um, uh, guide and help with. And uh, just to give you an, a brief example, um, we can guide on several issues. We guide customers and, and customers with new ideas uh, regarding the first steps and the obstacles when you, you try out new uh, products on the Danish uh, healthcare market. It could, for example, be uh, local laws or governance, or how to move from idea to prototyping. So we are actually also a sort of uh, Palo Alto idea generation house, where you can come and try out quite new stuff and have an iteration and try new ideas on a, on a schedule and on board and also on demonstration lab. Um, so we help with the Danish healthcare market, uh, try to understand that. We also help with legislative, legislative demands and, of course, national standards. Because we have these standards when we talk about uh, telemedicine, um, and we call that Medcom standards. That's the, the, uh, the company that drives the standards of the Danish healthcare infrastructure system. Um, for example, just to give you an example, we had an we had an um, co-creation with a Danish a company that produce uh, bed linings and beds and and uh, mattresses. You, maybe you know it. It's called Tempur, uh, and they uh, they for a lot of years ago they they produced mattresses and uh, bed linings to des uh, Danish health 
uh, and hospital units. But now they just, um, they just seek for the more private market and they want to go back to the healthcare market because they have a, can see some opportunities in producing mattresses for the healthcare market. So they went to us and tried to seek and find some, some guidance in how to get back on the market again. That's, some, that's a quite a normal way of uh, the work we're doing. Um, the second was events and meetings. For example, you guys. <laughs> um, that could be that we have a lot of uh, people coming uh, through the, uh, the facilities of SDSC, or the, the Innovation Center of Southern Denmark. Um, and some of them just uh, book our facilities, like uh, I think you guys did. And then we come and just have a briefly talk about what we're doing here, and that we love that actually. But we also sometimes have meetings with, where we conduct the meetings, and where we just uh, have a, a focus on different types of um, focus areas regarding maybe to the regional uh, focus thoughts or national uh, stuff that we want to discuss in these um, in these facilities. I'll give you a brief example in the end of, uh, of my slides. Um, so we have these state-of-the-art, we, we call it the state-of-the-art facilities for meetings and events. As you can see, it's not uh, normal to see an ambulance in, the, in a meeting area or the dollhouse like this. <laughs> so um, we often think of the, these area, this um, meeting facilities as where, where people can meet and be inspired uh, to think creative and find new solution for the um, for the healthcare market that they uh, even described for you uh, a while ago. Um, normally, we are able to accommodate groups from 20, like you, 20 to 150 people. And for a while ago, we had actually two of these facilities, but now we just rented the other facilities out for Healthcare Denmark. Do you know Healthcare Denmark? Are you going to, to talk about Healthcare Denmark later? No? That's a national... Um, uh, science section or, or information center about the healthcare uh, system in Denmark. And they're going to have an office just right next door. So, so we just have these facilities now and rented the last of the facilities out. Um, and of course, the test and demonstration. Um, we do two sorts of work when we uh, talk about test and facilitate, uh, demonstration. Sorry. We have um, the opportunity to visualize situations. Um, uh, because of this dollhouse, we can do mock-ups and prototyping in a one-to-one -one scale. So we can do, often when we have new products, new ideas, we sit around a table and we just find out this, oh, this would be a great idea to, to, find, to, the, to, to solve this problem. And then we just all agree this is an idea, when, but when we go and, and put it on the market, we often find some obstacles and barriers and, and there's a lot of change managing in this. So when we try out the solution on real day life or on real people or clinicians like you, we often find out that it, it wasn't that great idea when, when we tried it uh, in a one-to-one -one scale. So this facilities actually give you the opportunity to try these things out before they get into the market. So it's a, uh, we call it a sandbox. You can come and try other stuff. So often we invite clinicians. It could be um, physiotherapists. Uh, if they, we have something called Genotrain Deco, famous word for, oh, I don't know, rehabilitation. Thank you. Um, Rehabilitation.com, you can say that. Uh, it's a uh, portal for uh, for rehabilitation of patients. And instead of um, just trying it out on a uh, computer, we tried it on real people, actually, in these facilities. So we could see how it worked out and how the, the, the data flow just went from the patient to the clinician and, and backwards. And that was quite interesting because we saw the obstacles when, while we did, we did that. So. Um, that's why we have these facilities, that to visualize situations, but also to test and see the effect of sharing data between or across uh, borders in the Danish healthcare system. Because we have this sector, um, 
sharp sector borders in the Danish healthcare system. We have to try it out. Um, normally, it should be for for common people, not people like you, but common people. It's very hard to understand why we can why why the information uh, received by the doctor and the GP didn't just normally just flow to the to the hospital. Um, but there's are obstacles that we it's very hard to explain. And when we tried out in our um, uh, digital solution, we have also had a digital one-to-one uh, -one scale uh, data solution behind uh, the dollhouse, then people can see how the data flows by testing it on the screens, and then we can see which data do the GP's office get, and which data do they get on the hospital section. So that's actually also a way of, of try out uh, data pushing between borders in the Danish healthcare system. Um, so we try two parts. We have um, physical tests where we try out stuff with clinici clinicians, also actors actually, I'll show it later, uh, and then data flow uh, system between border sections. Oh, that's me. <laughs> that's uh, just a, a few examples of how we work. This is from an... Um, and uh, and workshop we did, uh, I think uh, half a year ago, for uh, both clinicians uh, and from logistical people on the different hospitals in the region. You know, we have seven hospitals in the region. I can't remember actually the number. We have uh, Sylvester's Hospital, the Middelfart Hospital, Weile, Espia, and so on. About seven, eight hospitals. I mean, you don't. Don't blame me if I'm wrong with this, but but they all gathered together here in the, these facilities, and we discussed for a whole day how can we be better in in uh, in uh, in logistic on the hospital because it's more and more digitalized. So can we do stuff uh, in a way so everybody get the uh, advance of using one system instead of have seven, eight different systems? So we did a workshop for a whole day. In these facilities, just a, just one of the examples of how we can guide customers, or the uh, uh, the hospitals. Um, we also conduct, of course, as I told you, events and meetings. This is from a, an AI conference we had uh, we conducted uh, half a year ago, with the particip participants from actually all over the world, from Israel, from Germany, from Denmark, and. And we have local doctors telling about how they they use AI in daily basis on the um, on the hospital in uh, Odense. We also had the doctors from Israel telling how they use what we call uh, synthetic data. You have heard of synthetic data? No, that's when you don't you know the GDPR problems. We can't use data just in a one-to-one -one scale because uh, of uh, uh, of the uh, the problems with the um, what do you call it? Uh, problems with the recognizing the patients in the data. So in Israel, they, they found out a solution that they can do a match of the data, so you don't have to use the same data. You can use what they can uh, call synthesized data. Um, very interesting. And that was the um, uh, the AI uh, conference we held here, actually where you're sitting. Do you want one example? Uh, I can tell you. Uh, that was just the kickoff meeting. Actually, we afterward held a lot of meetings here, uh, network meetings for for clinicians and from for uh, um, people in the regions, um, uh, uh, digitalization uh, apartment and so on. Wow, what did I do? Yeah. Okay, this this is from an other event we call the pregnancy event. <laughs> It was, uh, you know, we have this maternity sh journal um, in physical form. This is actually a good example of, of how we use digitalization in Danish healthcare system, but don't do, use it in any, in every uh, uh, part of our work. You know, the pregnant women still have to carry this yellow envelope uh, from the doctor, from the DP to the. Uh, to the uh, bed section or to the uh, to to her own home or, for example, around the Danish healthcare system, that's quite inconvenient. And sometimes it get it's get lost or it's broken. Or so we ha we thought of digitalizing this 
mat uh, maternity report, but it not been succeeded yet because of a lot of obstacles. So actually, we ha held a meeting in our facilities, and we uh, booked four uh, actors. And as you can see, we just played um, how they met these uh, different obstacles in the healthcare system. And then it was um, it was a discussion between all the uh, participants in the conference. So that's also a way we can use uh, the the plug and play uh, facilities. Yeah. Then the test and demonstration. This is actually the bed section or the hospital section. This is what we call the art player. It's from an um, a test of how people with anxiety about blood uh, samples, how they react when we, they are uh, when they are um, introduced to to art. Uh, so, would art make them more um, convenient with the situation, uh, or would they still have the anxiety about um, uh, taking the blood examples? So, they didn't do the blood exam, but they told them they going to, was going to take the blood example. So they had this uh, lineup of people going into our facilities and then into the situation and we uh, measured the blood pressure and also um, saw the eye reflection with the small uh, cameras and um, yeah and self reporting also how they felt during this uh, this test and this is from I told you before that we had an an, uh, an uh, company called Medcom Medcom is providing all the standards we are using when we're talking about telemedicine uh, in the healthcare system. And they wanted to try a new end-to-end -end test of a data solution or of an infrastructure. So they came to us and asked if they could use our facilities to test these uh, data flow. And um, all these people are people who, who are data scientists. And they also, some actors, my former colleague actually here, <laughs> And they saw how the data uh, flew between the, the borders in, in, in this again. So I'm repeating myself, but uh, it's because I'm very uh, happy about uh, the facilities. I hope you, you share my... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, any questions? Congratulations, both of you. Uh, very exciting what you do here and fascinating as well. Uh, well, um, uh, I'm fascinated because you are closing with important processes. I think at level country, how, uh, kind of, what kind of support do you receive of, at policy level? Uh, do, are you talking about project, uh, national project, regional project? or? So some of the projects are national projects, but the most of our projects are actually regional. Uh, I think the 80% of our projects are regional and are funded by regional funds. The rest are um, maybe 5% of them. Uh, uh, no, I think 70% is regional projects. 10% are private uh, uh, companies uh, going in to try out new s solutions. To the healthcare market, and the 20% is national products or, or projects. Very important figures, yes. And uh, you are work, you are co-creating with patients, with citizens. Yeah. What mechanism do you usually use to recollect these citizens into project in order to 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 hear them what they need and how they see the project? And this this area of the uh, of our facilities actually f uh, uh, all the. Um, uh, what do you call the people who collect the 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 the, the customers or the uh, the patients for the different products we have, and they're specialized in in doing this. I, I actually don't know quite precise how they do it, but I know they they got their patients and they and the the participants from different sorts of projects that they are enroll, involved in. On, um, um, for example, uh, diabetes products. They, they, they take contact to the diabetes, um, uh, uh, sorry, NGO. NGO, yeah, the diabetes NGO, and they often just provide with the, the patients and, and, and 
participants for the forum. And then we also use social media. Yeah. Uh, to... Okay. Yeah. You have um, a lot of um, a lot of the participants want to to share the information, and they want to participate often in these sort of uh, sort of projects. So we don't have problems by um, uh, collecting people for these uh, types of. Uh, okay, and, and then I I I'm sorry I don't check, but I think you publish what you do in terms of research. Do you? Uh, yeah, sorry, some of. Yeah, we are not doing research project, projects here, but we often cooperate with the, University. With the hospitals and with the university to, to do research, and that would be published. But for the cases mm. I shared, the telemedicine on wound assessment, uh, that's published. But yeah. all the other results are published as well, but not as research. Oh. Yes, I, I ask that because it's important in terms to ex to. to Extend the results. Sorry, just one more time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just help even with this because, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yes, it's important to publish what you do because it's very important. And I ask you because the, if you want to publish what you do, and the number of patients you need to recollect is different because as that, as statistical figures, it's important. No, it's. It's just because uh, I don't know how many people do you need to, rec to recollect here in terms of citizens and patients when you are making a project or, but. It depends, it depends on what project we do. We don't, as Eben told, we're not doing scientific work. We just do um, what you call it, uh, uh, work. Uh, we, we provide the scientific people on the uh, university with with the uh, uh, stuff and and um, uh, uh, thoughts from participants before they go into a, a research on the university, so we don't have to to be that uh, harsh on how we collect the different types of patients. Do, do, do you understand? Yes. Yeah. So, um, but often it de it depends on which project we do. Some projects we have a lot of people coming through the, the facilities. Uh, but often, we, I think we have between 20, 25, 30 people gathering in, in these facilities. Yeah. But it differs in yeah. what kind of project we're talking about, because yeah. sometimes it's just an explorative project to see if a certain technology will, will work. And then the physicians can uh, do research afterwards. Yeah. And sometimes it's Im Im implementing uh, known technology uh, in a larger scale, so that's also one of the... Um, Perfect. Yeah. Okay, that's all. It's congratulations again, because it's fascinating. I would like to do the same in my university yeah. Yeah. and to have these resources you have I'm here. gladly going to Spain to show <laughs> the people. Yeah. I would like to do that. Yeah. I will Thanks. invite you to... to yeah. Yeah. Can I go back with you guys? To... <laughs> I don't you. think the weather well compared to Spain is very good in Denmark. So. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, sorry, more yeah, questions? I have a question that I'm sure everybody's thinking about. Yeah, of course. Because after, after we have seen all the stuff that you, both of you have shown with us, I'm sure that everybody's thinking, um, can we help, some, help to have some kind of project or help you in some way? I guess that they would like also to participate, or the other university for Spain would like also to participate. Is there any kind of uh, project or any kind of uh, mm. requirement? We so actually, oh. do one, one answer, actually, yes, because we want to participate as much as possible with uh, also foreign uh, companies and uh, healthcare providers or institutions as yours. Uh, so we would always like to, to, to work together with people. Um, and then we, we have, have actually uh, a year, a, a EU project uh, in the coming. Uh, it's starting in eight uh, weeks, I think. And there's two regions from Spain also participating. Uh, we're going to. Um, we, we're one of the providers of a, a good practice, uh, which is uh, a way to implement telemedicine or the 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 sharing of data across sectors. So there will be an, a EU project uh, in, in the next couple of years. And I think that it, that will show a lot of um, results afterwards. So we have, feel free to contact yeah, us. Yeah, feel free to contact <laughs> us. We would like to 
not only to get to Spain, but also to <laughs> get you to Denmark. So, but, um, but we have, I think we have often one, two projects on new basis that we are involved in. And we have a funding team that uh, help us uh, also collecting and finding the money to, 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 to do this uh, kind of um, uh, cooperation with other uh, institutions. So, yeah, of course, as even said, f feel free to contact us. That would be, uh, of course, we would help and gladly work together with you. Yeah, questions? Yeah, of course, we have a lot of time. Um, Hans, minutes. help me because I have a problem with my feel or understand that telemedicine. Telemedicine is a solution of today or is a past solution? Because we have teaching telemedicine, we started at 2010, and now we are teaching digital health, not mm -hmm. telemedicine. And we started earlier, or, or what's the problem with telemedicine? Uh, oh, we have been working with it for years, uh, so it's it's not a new thing. I think uh, what we are going to is a more structured way of doing telemedicine. Earlier it's just been isolated projects. Now we actually have a common infrastructure in Denmark, uh, so that it's easier to put on new solutions. Yeah. Uh, but I, telemedicine or telehealth, I think we also have um, um, expanded the meaning of, uh, um, how would you say, home treatment or, yeah. So I agree, it's been on for the last 10 years. Yeah, it, it is precious like that. It is exactly that, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it is because, for example, the problem that we had in Spain yeah. was uh, the, this university started with some kind of uh, was teaching how to use telemedicine. There was a program, mm. but uh, the problem was that uh, to get the students to that, we, ca we have to see that it works. We have to see yeah. how to use it. Mm. Uh, and such. the problem is also sometimes the government it is not giving so much attention on telemedicine projects because uh, there are many telemedicine projects, mm. but, but if you don't know how to implement, you don't know how to do it, sometimes it's a little bit difficult. Mm. So uh, that's why uh, uh, I, I guess it will take a little bit more time to, to, to get into the, into the, into the uh, projects itself. But what they are doing here, it is not exactly teaching telemedicine. They are, they are more or less giving the tools mm. to, to, to make to other people use to make uh, projects. That's why they are not, not, not making, not, not in research exactly. But the ones that come in are making the research. Mm -hmm. It is like that more and or less. And the four cases I had today, show today, they are all uh, national projects which were decided uh, for the budget, uh, for the governance uh, budget. So we are, we are moving on to mm. a paradigm where it's, it has a political focus as well. Um, and we are actually also having a focus on the um, how do you say, the, the physicians, uh, their ability to use telemedicine. Yes. We also have projects for that, mm. uh, teaching uh, projects as well. Yeah, because it, they, they understand also that this telemedicine can help people, it can help patients without this project, this project that they said about uh, pregnancy, for example. Mm -hmm. The women doesn't have to, the, the pregnant woman doesn't have to go to the hospital. They can be monitored at home. Mm. Or, for example, this uh, uh, fail her, failure, fail, failure, heart failure. I'm sorry, project. Uh, the patient has some kind of uh, iPad that they can see. Rather, uh, no, sorry, they can contact a nurse. They can contact a doctor. They have a, pay, a, a, a scale so they can measure, and it is connected with Bluetooth. So, in the computer, you have the you have how many kilos patient is now, how many kilos was today, how does it feel. Also, it is registering by blood to the, the blood pressure, so the patient doesn't have to do too much. But we know how is the patient. Mm -hmm. So it is helping and avoiding that the patient is going to be to the hospital, and it is also avoiding Actually, spending money. We thought that the telemedicine would solve problems with lacking of doctors, or doctors who, who wouldn't like to go to the local areas, as Eru or Swinburne, like Different, yeah, <laughs> um, but but we found out that actually telemedicine help, helps out in a different way. It helps the patients more mm -hmm. because they can stay at home and they, for example, the pregnant uh, woman with diff difficulties. I don't know what the name of the product complication. The comp just the complication pregnancy complications. Complicated pregnant women. Yeah. They're all complicated. Or yeah, they 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 can be monitored. <laughs> they can be monitored at home. 
Sorry. Um, and uh, instead of they have to travel to the hospital to eat in every day or a couple of times a week, they can stay at home. And that's a very, uh, a very, um, they get a lot of um, benefits by being in their own home instead of going to the hospital all the time. So telemedicine is a, quite a big thing and it's implemented quite good in the Danish healthcare system now. Klaus, who's sitting now behind, is actually going, is going out to the doctors in the regions and installing all these uh, telemedicine uh, solutions and their computers. I think, Klaus, 80% of the doctors, the GPs in the region, have, has uh, 300 uh, of 500 doctors in the region. GPs? 350. Mm. So they almost every GP's yeah. office in the region has a telemedicine uh, computer now. So that's, um, that's a normal thing, isn't it? Yeah, for, for, for example, GPs I'm using the... normally everyday teledermatology. Yeah. yeah. It, it is uh, something that I'm taking a picture and I have the results on five days. Like that, we are avoiding the patient to go to the dermatology if it is nothing, if it is some, some rash only, for example. So the dermatologist is saying if be sometimes five days, sometimes four days, it is only a rash, take it easy. No, you, you, you can control it with some corticoid cream. Or now, of course, I think it is maybe some kind of uh, cancer. Give an acute it to me so I can check it here. And do you receive some reimbursement to do that? Uh, the, 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 the health system here in Denmark is a little bit different. Uh, in Spain, the doctor is hired by the government. Here, the doctors are a little bit private. So, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. It's a, a little quite bit. odd construction. <laughs> it's a quite odd structure because they are, they the are, they are honored yeah. by the region, but they are self-employed, some sort of, yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, you throw it, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't hit him in the face. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you have uh, more amazing projects and congratulations. Uh, my answer is more for her because yeah. you have a uh, <laughs> um, in the telemedicine projects that um, involve uh, elderly people. Do you have any problem with the technology and the elderly people, or you maybe adapt this? kind of technology for them or it's, I don't know. Well, yeah, actually at first when we started doing telemedicine for elderly people, we thought that that would be a barrier for the, to, to have them use the technology. But actually they all have uh, grandchildren, so they're used to using uh, FaceTime or the, the, the huge barrier is actually the doctors. Mm. They are the ones who are not, um, uh, using technology and don't all have some kind of barrier or t towards using technology in their praxis. So that's actually uh, different than what we thought. So the, the, the population, they are ready to use technology uh, and they are happy to do it. Okay, okay. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Oh, not, not the same, no, <laughs> okay. No, the doctors <laughs> in Spain are quite good. <laughs> 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 I think uh, the problem in Spain, we, we, we uh, have actually a real problem with the lack of doctors yeah. because uh, in some in some specialties in our in our health uh, uh, system, we've got uh, uh, a few doctors few doctors in in primary care. We've got problems to uh, substitute the, the the lack of these doctors, and maybe these solutions in telemedicine may open a wide range of possibilities. Mm. So, so it's, it's, uh, 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 sometimes, to, sometimes we must encourage these, these solutions mm. and try to sell these solutions to the governments because mm. uh, uh, selling them these, these, these kinds of, 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 of solutions, we could uh, achieve uh, a better health system and also uh, um, get, get better, get better mm. uh, um, care of our patients mm. and uh, and uh, i think it's a, it's a, a kind of selling these solutions to the governments to improve the the, the attention for our patients That's i think nice. in spain we've got a, 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 a real problem with telemedicine because uh, uh, little efforts we do for example as 
uh, Hans uh, uh, has said about uh, teledermatology would be a good a good uh, way to avoid a great waiting list in, dermato okay. in dermatology. We've okay. got in our area we've got a six months six months delay in see, being being uh, see, uh, so, so attended by the dermatologist. So. Uh, a, li a, a little solution like daily dermatology could avoid a great waiting list problem. So, but you have, yeah, but you have to be aware that this is an investment uh, up front because the return of investment will be show, in, show later. Yeah, that yeah. will show later because you have to, it's change management in the hospitals or the GPs. You have to do. You have to be another kind of GP. Uh, so you have that's and, and actually we understand why the GPs yeah. are uh, quite um, resistant yeah. resistant for this because they it, it, all the cl clinical decisions are very odd when you do telemedicine. Yeah. So it's 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 good as you just told us. It's very it could be got, uh, very, very good in the dermatology uh, area, but also um, in other areas. But 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 it's um, it's change management. You as, as even mm. told us, it's yeah. you have to understand how it works and yeah. that you have to uh, rely on it. Yeah. But you, what you will find is that the patient will get more uh, self-empowered. Yeah. So they will actually be better at uh, uh, knowing when they are actually sick, when, uh, when they have to go to hospital mm. or when it's uh, capable for them to be at home. So that is a, a very huge uh, um, uh, bonus. Yeah. 